This effect is made completely procedurally inside of Blender using just nodes. We're also going to be making this material a looping animation utilizing drivers. So to make this thing, let's just first off delete the light and the cube. So X to delete that. Shift A and we're going to add in a UV sphere. Shade that smooth and we're going to press Control 2 to give it two levels of subdivision. From here, let's add in a basic plane, scale that up eight times, jump into edit mode. With edge selection, we're going to extrude the back face up on the Z axis, select this edge here and press Control B and then scroll up on our mouse wheel to create an infinite backdrop. From here, let's go shade smooth in object mode. We'll select our sphere here and bring this up above the plane. Now from here, we can jump into the shading tab and we can start on creating our material. So before we actually begin creating the material, let's actually enable Node Wrangler, which we'll be using in this tutorial. So up here in edit, click on preferences, go to add-ons and then search for Node Wrangler and make sure that that is enabled. Now that we've done that, one final thing that we can do is come up here to our render properties. We're going to change our render engine from EV over to cycles. Now with the cycle selected, we want to change our feature set to experimental. This is required so that we get this special effect that we're going to be creating. And also if you can change your device to GPU. With that out of the way, let's jump down here to our shading area and we're going to add in an HDRI. So come over here to object changes to world and then with the background node selected, press control T to open up an environment texture. And then we're going to bring in an environment texture. So click on open. I'm going to be using this Leiden Hall market that you can get for free on polyhaven.com. Once that's selected, we can jump back into object mode. And from here, we can select our circle and start creating this texture. So let's press new, change the material name to whatever you feel like. And now let's start adding in some nodes. So shift A, let's click search and type in noise texture. And also shift A, search and type in Musgrave. There we go. So from here, we want to click on our Musgrave texture and press Control T to bring up the mapping and texture coordinate. And for the texture coordinates, we're going to be using object. So grab the object and plug it into the vector. And while we're here for the Musgrave, let's grab the height and plug that into the vector of the noise. Now with all this out of the way, let's bring the noise texture over here, Shift A, search and type in color ramp and plug that in here. So grab the factor, bring this down to the factor of the color ramp. And to actually see what's going on, we can press control shift left click on the color ramp. And now you'll see we have this cool texture happening on our object. So for this effect to work, we basically need to make this uh, a lot more contrasty. So with the color ramp, we can drag these sliders across to create some really nice contrast as you can see. So something like that looks pretty good. From here, let's bring all these nodes across just by box selecting them. And what I'm going to do is duplicate this color ramp. So Shift D, bring it up here. I'm gonna grab the color here and plug this into the factor of this color ramp. So plug that in there. And now what we want to do is plug this color ramp into the base color as well as the subsurface color. So now with this color ramp, what we're going to do is basically create a gradient of colors that we want to be displaying. So for me, I'm going to click on this black here and click on the black color box here. From here, I'm going to jump into the hex code and I'm going to paste in this predetermined color 4D92FF. So feel free to copy that if you'd like. So with that selected, we can click out of that. You can see it hasn't yet updated on the texture. That's because we're still viewing this color ramp. So if we just go control shift click on the principal BSDF, you'll see now that this is updated. So we can come back to the color ramp and we can start adding some more colors. So I'm just going to click on the white value here, click open this color box and change the hex to the blue that I had before. Then I'm gonna click on the HSV and start dragging this slider across to something more of a yellow. There we go. Now we want to have another color sort of in the middle. So to do so, you can press control on your keyboard and then left click here. That'll create another slider for us to play with. So let's come down to the color box. Once again, paste in our hex code, click on the HSV, and we're gonna slide this all the way down to a red. Wonderful, so you can see we've got it kind of showing, 
but you'll see we've got a sort of a gradient from blue to red and red to yellow. To fix this, we can change the linear to a constant. There we go, and you'll see it's updated here, so we can now just start playing with this slider and make it something a little bit more pleasing to the eye. There we go, so that'll do for now. Moving on from here, we can come down to color ramp. We're basically going to add in a displacement node and plug in this color ramp. So let's go Shift A, Search, Displacement, drop that here, and we're going to grab the color, plug that into the height, and then from here, we're going to drag the displacement into the displacement of the material output. All right, so you can see we have some bump showing. For this to actually work, we need to enable two things. Firstly, in the modifier tab, we can click on adaptive subdivision, enable that. And we can also come down to the material tab and change this settings, change the displacement to displacement and bump. So with those two settings enabled, if we just change this over to rendered view, you'll see we have some crazy displacement going on. Not to worry, we can change this up down here. So if we just start playing with the height, you can get something a little more manageable. Um, but ideally, if we want to make the scale of the Musgrave and the noise texture a little less. So let's come over here, change the scale to something like one. There we go. And for the noise texture, I'm actually just going to keep it as is. So now that we've done that, we can start refining this displacement a little bit more. There we go. So I've gone with a mid-level of zero and a height of 0 0.13. Okay, so now with that out of the way, if we want to tweak the displacement a little bit more, we can play with the color ramp by dragging these sliders across. So you'll see the closer we crunch this line, uh, the more intense the displacement will be. And the further apart we bring it, the less intense the displacement will be. So let's just leave it at this for now. And again, I'm just going to change the scale one more time. There we go. So 0 0.5 seems pretty good. Um, now comes the part where we can add in some drivers and basically make this a looping animation. So before we do that, I just want to change the subsurface scattering. There we go. So I like the look of one for the subsurface scattering. It gives the material a bit more of sort of a fleshy, gummy feel. And I feel like it looks a lot nicer in the final render. So moving on to creating the drivers and the looping animation. I'm going to first of all change this back to material preview. And now what we can do is click on the Musgrave texture and change this over to 4D. We can also click on the noise texture and also change this over to 4D. Okay, so now that we have these W sliders, we're going to add in a math expression which is going to drive the animation. So we're going to be using a sine function and essentially a sine function is a wave. So it's going to go from the value of negative one to positive one and then back down to negative one, and then back up to positive one, et cetera, et cetera. So let's just jump in here. Let's click on the W here. We're going to type in hash, sine, bracket, frame. Then we're going to divide by 80 and close the bracket. So what we'll do is we'll actually select this and copy it, and we'll paste it into the W slider here as well. So left click out of that to confirm it, and you'll see that it changes to a purple. Um, that just means that the, the driver has now been enabled and it's ready to start working. So now that we've copied this, we can click on here, control V and paste that in. And now if we click play, it should start animating. If it's not animating for you, you may need to retype the expression. So let's just right click, delete this driver. I'm going to retype it. So hash sign bracket frame divide 80 close bracket press enter and you'll see i can see it's now updated i'm just going to do the same here so delete this driver go hash sign bracket frame divide 80 close bracket and press enter and now you'll see when we hit play you'll see that we've got some cool animation happening so if I just quickly open up a timeline here to, just to explain what's happening, I'll change this over to timeline. You'll see as I drag this slider, the number on the W's are basically changing. So we start at a value of zero, we come all the way up to a value of one, 
and then we go back down to a value of zero. And because this ends on the 250th frame, it's essentially a looping animation. There we go. So from here, it's totally up to you on how much displacement you wanna to add to this, um, as well as you can also add in extra textures in between here, which will give you different varying results. So for example, one that I've found is really cool is you can tap in magic texture, place that in here, and you'll see straight away, it's got some crazy results happening. But if we change the scale to something like 0.1 and we hit play, you'll see you get a totally different effect. So this is true also for, let's say the Voronoi texture. So, so if we delete that magic texture, press shift A, go texture, Voronoi. We can plug in the vector here and then plug the distance into the vector here. You'll see we get this really cool kind of spotty um, effect going on. And again, you can change the scale to whatever you feel like. Maybe 0.75 looks pretty cool. And you're not limited to just using the base Varnoi texture. You can actually update this to something like distance to edge. And if we just start playing with the scale, you can see you can get some really cool looking results. I should also mention that this is in the material preview. So if we actually jump into rendered, you'll see we have a totally different effect happening. Personally, I think this Varanoi texture with the end sphere radius is probably one of the coolest options. But yeah, you can totally go crazy with this setup and you can try out a bunch of different um, options to get even crazier results. Okay, so that's the material creation completed. As always, I'd love to see what you guys have created. So please at me on my socials, at Sculpts. If you'd like to support the channel, you can leave a like and a comment down below. Thanks for watching.